Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Science Faction. The only show where a scientist, a comedian, and a comedian scientist come together to discuss science. Comedically. Hello, and welcome to Science Faction 390. Science Faction, I call BS. As the science faction gimp, just give me the sweet science beating I need. To you get me do the week. need it. And speaking of the person who will give you that beating, I, of course, am your host, comedian archaeologist, Robert Timothy. And with me, as always, is my comedian, Mr. Damien Mercado. Damien, how are you doing this afternoon? Doing great. Uh, and I, I have dreams that I'm at Alex Jones and I'm just being like belittled scientifically by like Carl Sagan and a group of other scientists. I like that idea. You know what? That's fitting for you. Let's let's get a Photoshop of that. I have a I'm a, I'm Alex Jones. I'm I'm a red blooded American man with my shirt off. I have a ball gag in my mouth. My <laughs> hands are bound at my legs and feet. I'm, I'm wearing some tidy whities. Or as Alex Jones calls it, Christmas morning. <laughs> <laughs> and our scientist for the afternoon, uh, Doctor Ag. Doctor Ag, how you doing? Good. How are you? Fantastic. And again. You know, I think we explained this to you last time. Since you've been gone, since you took your hiatus about a year or so ago, still, Damien has yet to win a game of high Factually untrue. Still has yet to wow. do it. Fake news. You don't even need me. No, I'd, I'm pretty disappointed. <laughs> so. uh, all right. For those of you guys who haven't heard it before, I call BS the game where I read four science news articles, some of which are real and some of which are BS standing for bad science. They're all independent variables, meaning they can all be true, all be false, or any combination of in between. Let's get going with I call BS. I call. I call. I call. I call. I call. Ring, ring. I call. BS. Article number one. A new study indicates that airplane sewage may be helping to spread antibiotic-resistant bacteria around the world. Damien, is this science or bad science? This is science, and any developed nation with access to antibiotics is the new Canadian flight attendant, patient zero for antibiotic they're, resistance. They're, we bring, all, they're spreading it around the world. We all are gay Canadian flight attendants <laughs> in this country. <laughs> well, I think that was proven to be a myth, but okay, fair enough. It was. We discussed it on the show. <laughs> all right. And Dr. A.G. I, I normally just answer how he answers, right? but I got to go with bad science on this. Okay. Any reason? Doesn't it come down on a giant block of ice? <laughs> <laughs> we freeze it. <laughs> there is a myth that they would just drop it down. I do like that, though, because it just assumes, like, <laughs> we hope we don't hit anybody. <laughs> like, even We're if you're dropping over the flyover states. Like, even if you were over the Pacific, like, what if you took out a Japanese fishing vessel? And, like, what an international incident. Like, they're dropping poo bombs. It's okay. It was a Japanese whaling vessel. <laughs> they got off on it. <laughs> It was the German whaling vessel. <laughs> I, I, I really need more. I Of course, everyone always needs uh -huh. more information, but how the airline sewage. Yes. As it's in the plane. Maybe. You aren't going to tell I me. I can't tell you. I'm going to go, honestly, with, with the amount of germs that get passed around through air, airlines in uh -huh. general, I'm going to say it's science. Okay. Because airline sewage is then, uh, is then made into Arby's food. And if... <laughs> And if it has antibiotic <laughs> resistance in it. It's like when they, they make a diamond in the lab and they have a big like hydraulic press that turns <laughs> that turns the carbon into a diamond under pressure. They just put, they put airline feces <laughs> into a bowl and compress it Did you until hear? it comes out as horsey sauce. <laughs> Did you hear about the pastor that got busted yeah. trying to pay for <laughs> grinder with an Arby's gift card? <laughs> Arby's roast beef sandwich. He's got the meat. See, if you'd had, like, an In-N-Out gift card, I think it might have worked. Yeah, like, they have uh, Arby's, the meats. <laughs> they men care about their bodies. You can expect them to eat Arby's? I will gladly blow you Tuesday. <laughs> For a shitty roast beef sandwich. Uh, article number two. A fairly overlooked fracking-related methane leak in Ohio in 2018 turns out to be one of the largest methane leaks in human history. Damien, is this science or bad science? This is bad science because we have had far greater methane leaks. And I'm not just talking that all of central California, the part that you don't see in the postcards, uh -huh. is cow fart country. That is true. With just a constant slow methane leak. Yep. Or yes. as, as we discussed before, cow burp. 
Oh, that's right. That's right. Uh, the methane burp. comes from their burps. <clears throat> yeah. So you're saying cow I, methane, they got them yeah, beat. I wanted to believe it was farts. <laughs> I wanted to believe it and, I, and it, all right, the secret. Uh, no, and I also know there was that huge fucking leak in Los Angeles. Yes. Like last year that I thought that leak, we covered yeah. on the show. So I'm going to say bad science. All right. And Dr. AG. I'm going to say bad science because I don't think it was 2018. I think it was more recent. Okay. Article number three, researchers are currently looking into the use of LSD to treat Alzheimer's and just published preliminary findings indicating yes. it's safe to proceed with formal trials. Damien, is this science or bad science? This is science. And honestly, if you've been watching Fox News lately, it explains a lot of the things coming out of retirement homes right now. <laughs> They're just all green. I, don't, I feel like they'd be a lot happier. Like, I don't, I've never met an angry person on LSD, but I've met a lot of really happy ones. Yeah, you're right. I met a, really, a lot of really happy ones and a few pretty scared ones, but I've never met an angry one. Uh, all right, and Dr. AG. Yeah, this is uh, science. And lastly, article number four, a new study indicates that four. A new study indicates well, if well, if there would be if I was winning for any reason or we were tied, there would be a fifth <laughs> question. That would be a bonus question. That would be heavily slanted towards you. But I, we're tied. I've right never now. heard that happen before. All right, article number four, <laughs> a new study indicates that while the blindness causing disease toxocariasis is caused by infection of humans with specific roundworms from cats and dogs, less than one percent of the world's population is exposed to the disease, which is likely why most Westerners are completely unaware of it. Damien, is this science or bad science? This is science because in the West, you know, you would think. You would hear about it a lot more mm -hmm. in the West because people let their dogs into their house as opposed to other countries. But sure. we also don't go a mile out of our way to kick a dog and treat. And I, I think like in the Middle East, mm -hmm. they treat dogs like shit. In Mexico, sure. they treat dogs like shit. Sure. I think that's the dog's revenge. Is, <laughs> okay. Is, so they, they're actually doing it on purpose because they're tired of getting poorly treated. So they just release the disease in these countries. Yes. Okay. Well, maybe this is causation correlation. Maybe the dogs have a science team that that and science terrorism team that punishes okay. nations that okay. have poor dog relations. So what you're saying is the people who are infected with this disease is like 100% of guys from the Middle East, a bunch of guys from Central America, and Michael Vick. Like these guys are who the dogs have decided to take their vengeance back out on. Yes, Michael Vick, calling it, will go blind at some point from this disease. <laughs> All right, and Dr. A.G. Yes, science, but I think it might be because of dogs as cuisine. Oh, because they're eating them. That's pretty common in a lot of places. You know, we think of that as like super taboo. I've said this before. Like, I love my dog. I wouldn't want to eat my dog. But like. It's very common in, in a lot of. Have like, you ever seen a lamb? They're pretty fucking cute, they man. They are adorable. Like, <laughs> and those things are delicious. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's go back and see how you guys did. Follow along at home and see how you did. Article number one. A new study indicates that airplane sewage may be helping to spread antibiotic resistant bacteria around the world. Both of you guys thought this one was science. And this one is Science. So it's really interesting. They did a study of antibiotic resistance of airplane sewage and found that 90% of airplane sewage, this happened to be done in Germany, so they, they got people who were landing in Germany. Of course yeah. Yes, yeah. This, uh, this, this feces tastes as if it is resistant to antibiotics. Please, Hans, come over here and taste this for me. You need a second opinion. The problem with antibiotic resistant feces is it looks horrible on my wife. <laughs> yes, quick, we have to hurry. Werner Herzog is coming to pick up his, his shipment for an Arby's. <laughs> I own several Arby's <laughs> in the greater Berlin region. Ironically. No, so they did a study and they looked at the planes coming into an average German airport. And they looked at the antibiotic resistant strains of bacteria that were present in the sewage tanks of those planes. And 90% of the samples taken ended up having antibiotic resistance factors. Compare that with standard wastewater in Germany, and that's like 40 to 60%. So you're talking about a much higher amount. And you might think, well, yeah, but that's going in the sewer, right? This is where we're getting our antibiotic resistant shit from, right? It's people throwing away their antibiotics in the sewer and then drugs get resistant to it. And people who take antibiotics are getting antibiotic resistant diseases, crap it out, and it gets in the sewer, eventually making its way to our waterways and then eventually to us or in some kind of contact range to us. In this case, they're just, I mean, nothing special happens to plain poo. Plain poo goes in the same sewer the rest of our poo goes into. And if we're shoving that with highly concentrated antibiotic resistant stuff, likely because in other countries, you don't need prescriptions to get antibiotics. This was a big thing growing up in Southern San Diego. It was a real problem. We had a lot of antibiotic resistance because in Mexico, people frequently will take like a single pill of an antibiotic when they get sick. And there's just not the culture as to why that is wrong. And so you get a lot of very strongly antibiotic resistant germs coming out of those places. An airplane is a smorgasbord of people from different countries with different experiences and they're all pooing in one place. And when that happens, you now have this great mixture of antibiotic resistance that is getting deposited. And you might think, well, that's Germany, who cares? That's every airport. If you have an airport in your city, 
that is coming in, especially an international one, that stuff is coming in with antibiotic-resistant poo getting pumped into your municipal sewer. You know what? While the antibiotic-resistant portion of your this story isn't ideal, there's actually a message of hope. You know, the airport's a place where people of all ilk can come together and poo. And, yes. And all feces can mix together. And, and occasionally have male-on-male sex in the bathroom. Occasionally. I just take a wide stance. I have a wide stance. <laughs> All right, article number two, a fairly overlooked fracking-related methane leak in 2018 in Ohio turns out to be one of the largest methane leaks in history. Both of you guys thought this was bad science, and this one is science. Dr. AG, you might have been confused because they just released the report this week. Okay, that's why I was, because I just saw it. Yes, here's why this is way bigger news. You might think, oh, okay, so they found a big methane leak. We all know methane, 25 times more uh, powerful greenhouse gas than CO2, huge problem in terms of greenhouse gas effects, really, really big issue. First reason this is a really big issue. This one incident, which was an, a leak in a plant in Ohio, this in a fracking plant. So they're fracking. They've gotten essentially a tube down into the earth with a bunch of gas released. And then something happens where there's essentially an explosion and they can't control it. And now that methane is uncontrollably being released into the air. An earth enema. 60,000 tons of methane were released in this particular one. Question. Yes. If somebody had smoked a cigarette around uh-huh. there. Would that have turned the Earth into a rocket ship? That would have, and then it <laughs> shot us the other way. <laughs> Undoubtedly, yes. But then it does that thing where it's like a balloon that's deflating. That Don't. could be the answer to climate change. <laughs> Push we'll us further away, further from the sun. Yeah, like Wally. <laughs> <laughs> so huge leak, and this is how big it is. That one leak, which lasted a few days, was responsible for one quarter of all oil and gas emissions in Ohio for the year. Holy shit. Think of every industrial plant. Ohio. I'm thinking of Ohio. (laughs) Every car. Every Browns game. Every (laughs) plant. Exactly. (laughs) Everything. All of those emissions, this is 25%. All the beer farts. massive. And it's really, really bad because, again, methane is such a horrible thing. That's 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 25 times worse. It was more recent than this because I just saw that story. But the the most interesting part about this isn't how bad it is. It isn't that it happened. It isn't that we didn't hear about it. It's how we finally did hear about it. So Dr. AG just heard about it last week. So did I. Why did we hear about it? Because of a special satellite we have put in orbit and we're just, the reason it took a while to kind of get the stuff is we're just kind of getting all that data and putting it in. And, you and, thought I was mad when I created this methane satellite. You thought I was mad. But what's crazy is you're able to see these <laughs> methane clouds using the satellite and he was able to show it and measure this. This is a whole new ball game because we actually wow. think that this tennis of stuff has been happening quite a bit and we just never know about it. Because if you're in an oil field in Montana, who the fuck's going to narc on you when you start releasing a bunch of methane? Nobody. You are responsible for reporting your own stuff unless there's a government regulator around so if all of a sudden you have the eye in the sky and you can spot methane leaks we might be able to start holding industry really accountable it's very big news this slid under the radar freedom and i'm against that i mean this slid under the radar is a horrible tragedy which it is but the benefit of this the really good flip side of this is we might suddenly realize that this has been happening a lot and we can finally stop it or at least charge them for it yeah do you think the mayor of toledo like gave a speech after this came out for once we're not the worst thing about ohio (laughs) Uh, All right. Article number three. Researchers are currently looking into the use of LSD to treat Alzheimer's disease and just published preliminary findings indicating it's safe to proceed with formal trials. Both of you guys thought this one was science and this one is thankfully science. Now, to start off with, these are micro dosings. <laughs> You're not having a bunch of, of bunch of dudes who can't remember their kids' names just yelling about colors. Like These are supposed to be non-psychedelic like psychedelic doses that they're taking. Yeah, oh, wait, so, oh, I get it. They can't remember their kids' names because of the Alzheimer's. <laughs> yeah. And it's the colors yes. because of the LSD. Yes. It could be either or. Oh, either or, yeah, That's yeah. why they no longer have Alzheimer's. <laughs> <laughs> So we've talked before about a a lot of the potential treatment possibilities for things like addiction, PTSD, depression, things like that for hallucinogens. And they have shown huge promise in those. I would have not have thought of hallucinogens as something that you would use for Alzheimer's disease. But here is what's really interesting. So they found that a lot of these psychedelics work by stimulating the serotonin 5-HT2A receptor in the brain. That receptor not only mediates cognitive function, but also if you have a disruption to them, they've been implicated in early symptoms of Alzheimer's disease. So one of the ideas is that using an agonist for 5-HT2A, which is like LSD, might basically stop the chronic inflammation we think is associated with Alzheimer's disease. It's the idea that 
yes, it makes you trip out and stuff, but it does other stuff to the neurology part of your brain. And one of the interesting things about hallucinogens is, unlike a lot of drugs, they make it through the blood-brain barrier and we get an experience from them. We know they're impacting our brain. So while it might seem counterintuitive that something like a hallucinogen might be a treatment for Alzheimer's disease, the very fact that it can have an effect on our mental state means that it does have a possible mechanism of action to at least having some impact on our brain. Very interesting if it turns out that LSD is what old people really need to not go crazy. I guess the problem is how am I going to get my grandfather up to Burning Man? Yes. I guess in the morning. Again, micro doses. There's also a really interesting article that we didn't get a chance to cover. I, I almost had it on. But there was a woman who thought she had dementia for like five years. She was acting crazy, running around naked. She's having conversations with people who aren't there. And people think she has Alzheimer's or some other form of dementia. And they found out it was just a vitamin B12 deficiency. And they give her a B12 shot. And this person who is literally like institutionalized crazy is just a normal person again. So something to think about, by the way. Side note, when you start yeah, seeing somebody go crazy. Taking notes here, vitamin B12. Yeah. So uh, a five-hour energy drink. Yeah, 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 right? <laughs> Fix this. All right, and lastly, article number four. A new study indicates that while the blindness causing disease, toxocariasis, is caused by infection of humans with a specific roundworms from cats and dogs, less than 1% of the world is exposed to the disease, which is likely why most Westerners are unaware of it. Both of you guys thought this one was science, and this one is bad science. Congratulations, Dr. A.G., for wrecking the floor with Damien. We, we wrecking the floor. And the tie goes to who, Damien? It goes to Alex Jones. No, it goes yeah, to the yeah. scientists. You know that. I have a link from my losses. They just go straight to Alex Jones. So they actually estimated that about 20% of the world's population, well over a billion people, are exposed to it. Can you guys guess why we don't know about this disease? Or why you guys probably hadn't heard about it before today? I think it developed world thing. Sort of, almost. Tropical disease. Here is something that's really interesting. I've only been made aware of this quite recently uh, from a tropical disease specialist. But there's a are... dude wearing a flamingo shirt. <laughs> he has a margarita in his hand. Hey, buddy. Uh, I got herpes. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you do. So what's interesting is there are all these diseases that we call tropical diseases that are around in, quote unquote, tropical areas that are kind of bad and they ruin your life. There's a lot of worm infections, a lot of horrible stuff like that. You're not just talking about reggae. <laughs> and it's pretty regular in those areas, but we just don't have them. And one of the things he brought up that I was really interesting, and I've thought about this a lot since he told me this, is the amount of diseases changes dramatically the further you get away from the equator. Until you get to a point where you're in like northern Siberia, you are very unlikely to get sick. Even if it wasn't so like undensely populated with people, right? You are very unlikely to get sick because literally just like us, bacteria cannot survive in extreme cold. And that so, is why say people in Siberia are so happy all the time yeah. because there is no disease. Well, it makes you think like zombie outbreak comes head north, right? The disease won't be able to survive up there and the people won't be able to catch it and stuff. Has it been on the, on the, has it been increasing recently? The actual instance of the disease? Yes. Yes, but not the frequency. It's just been increasing because our population, Earth's population is growing and more people are living in the tropical areas. Okay, areas. so so far climate change isn't affecting this. No, yet. but that's a really good point. I hadn't even considered that, which is as as the area of the tropics increase, then the area where these diseases can survive will increase too. So we'll probably see more of these. Again, this is just a roundworm that you can get from a dog or a cat. We don't tend to get those in the U.S. as much. It's not as much a problem in U.S. and Europe and some other places. It can happen. It does happen. Also, we usually tend to catch it quickly. That is really important for this because the worst infection you can get with this guy, there are some neurological symptoms and there are some other asthma and some other stuff, allergies. So there can be some bad symptoms all around. But in my opinion, the worst part is an eye infection because the progression of this is you get an eye infection, your eye starts getting swollen, you start having hard time seeing, and within a month, you have permanently blind in that eye. Jesus, just takes some LSD. Yeah. <laughs> But think about this. Think how none of us would have thought there's a weird dog worm that takes away your eyesight. But if you live in certain parts of the tropics, it's so regular that half your friends might have like fucking one eye. It's crazy to think about that we just ignore That's these why things. pirates wore so many eye patches. <laughs> they had too many of these fucking worms. <laughs> Do I keep a monkey or parrot on me shoulder? A dog took me eye with a worm. You get them by having too much close contact with the feces of animals. So in the same sense we we talked about on Who's Sunday. Who's doing that? Like little kids. <laughs> Actually, it happens a lot with little kids. So on the same I put time, my plate next to the grass my dog shits on, and I'm not changing me. You will eat cat poo. <laughs> so you have basically kids and, uh, and I guess sometimes adults coming in contact with sometimes just the animals, right? Because the animal's rolling around in its own feces, and then you pet the animal, and then you, you get it on yourself. But 
this is how it gets transmitted. So something to think about when you are traveling into tropical places, even in parts of the U.S., but specifically when you're traveling in tropical places, maybe don't pet all the dogs. You know, like maybe maybe don't have a puppy party with all the beach dogs in Mexico. Leave the no. cat shit alone in yeah. Hawaii. No, no, no. You beach should treats. Definitely, if you ever go to Mexico and are on the beach, you should pet every dog and don't look at the worms falling out of their butt. And drink um, the water. Drink the beach water. Drink all the water. Yes. <laughs> and if, at, by the way, if after playing with dogs, especially in tropical environments, you start noticing a problem with your vision, go to the doctor right away because it's actually easily treatable, but ah, once you're blind, you're blind. That so, was going to be my question. Yeah. It can be stopped. Yeah, so we have these anti-parasitic stuff. It's it's actually similar to stuff, some of the stuff we use for toxoplasmosis, which is another parasite that gets in our body. Which is also, from animal poop. And, yeah. And doesn't uh, Brazil, a, a tropical uh-huh. nation, yes. have an insane toxoplasmosis yes. rate? In 35%, general? yeah. Yeah, so really like nutty there and also a lot of aggression there. So maybe that's that's what happened. Do you think that's that why they have that big Jesus statue? Yeah. <laughs> Chases away all the room of worms and <laughs> But it gives them sweet abs, so it's a good balance. So is there a direct correlation between people having toxoplasmosis and learning jujitsu? Yes. Yeah, actually there actually would be a correlation since so many Brazilians know jujitsu. That would absolutely be there. <laughs> Krav Maga. <laughs> Yeah, what's Israel looking like? <laughs> all right. Thank you, audience, for coming back for Science Faction 390, where you learned all about how airplane sewage might be helping spread antibiotic resistance around the world. How an overlooked methane leak in 2018 turns out to be one of the largest methane leaks in history. How LSD might be the newest treatment for Alzheimer's disease. And how you can get a little-known blinding disease from dog poo. Thank you so much for joining us, and come on back next week for Science Faction 391. Arby's. We have the feces. You've been listening to Science Function. Wait, that's not right.